Thank you. We are presenting Base Lays, which is an interactive Focus Plus context laser floor, and this is a project by Konstantin Schmidt, Dieter Evole, and myself. And in order to show you what that means, I'm starting with a small video. So Base Lays is a self-contained system. It's pretty small, 1.3 meter height, and it creates an interactive um, projection around it of 75 square meter projection area and it projects in low resolution in the entire area simultaneously, but it also provides a number of high resolution focus spots that can be moved around within that area. People can interact with base lays through their feet, their hands, and their silhouettes, and um, interact in the, entire, in the entire area of the projection. So what we are really addressing with the system is what we believe is one of the great visions of HCI, and that is the IAO bulb, uh, proposed by John Underkoffler, and what the I.O. bulb is, it is a light bulb that you can screw in into any fixture, and it provides us high-resolution imagery on all surfaces in the room, and it also enables input uh, through cameras. There's been considerable work on actually implementing such an I.O. bulb in HCI. For example, there have been approaches using multiple projectors and multiple cameras in one location by Wilson, and there have been approaches using a single projector and a fisheye lens, for example, by Benko, there's been, there have been further approaches by using a projector with a pen tilt mirror um, on top of it by Pinyanis. So we have gained quite some insight on such I.O. bulbs in recent years, and we have, um, we have found that there are th uh, three core problems, and that's focus, brightness, and resolution. For focus, using normal raster projectors, it's quite difficult to build such a raster projector such that all surfaces in our environment are in focus simultaneously, independent of the inclination to, this, uh, to, the, um, to the projector. So as one possible sol solution to this problem, we propose to use laser projection instead. Laser projection does have the benefit that it has much less focus issues than uh, raster projection um, using, um, using uh, images and uh, lenses. And it also enables us to concentrate that the light that we are actually projecting on the actual content that we want to show and not just to distribute the entire light in the entire room. In order to address the resolution problem, we propose focus plus context uh, projection so that we can have uh, high resolution focus insets which are movable in our projection area. So base lace is 1.3 meter high. You, it's an integrated unit, integrates a mirror, no need for ceiling mount and you can just place it anywhere in, in a space in order to create such interactive floors. Um, create a 75 square meter interaction area, and if you wanted to create the same area using a um, standard laser projector with a ceiling mount, you would need to place it at more than 10 meters height, uh, which is, so our, our, our base list is actually much easier to install than alternative approaches. Hi, I'd like to give you a greater insight into all the technical components. So at first, yeah, there's a context mirror, and as um, we said, it has a low resolution on all the space, and here's the reason for this. So we have this compact design, and the laser projector have just small scan angles. So we need some optical device to spread it to the whole space all around, and for this we took a curved mirror that is um, placed above the laser projector. Um, an obvious solution would be to take a spherical mirror, like this surveillance mirror, but uh, some analysis of such mirror um, results in real problems for the outer regions of projection. So if you project to outwards to five meters away from the projector, the point size on the ground would be 14 centimeters with our laser. So the point is um, rising in size or gets bigger and bigger. So what we are looking for was a mirror that has a behavior like this for the point size on the ground, so that for each distance, the point size stays the same. <coughs> in other words, um, when you shoot up, raise in arbitrary angles, the point that appears on the ground has the same diameter. So what are the three effects that um, let the size of a point on the floor yeah, appear bigger than it was before. So the first thing is that if you shoot with a parallel laser ray to a curved mirror, it will diverge after the, after the reflection. The second reason is if you shoot with a certain angle to the ground, the ray will appear bigger on the floor too. And the third reason 
is that there are no lasers that are really parallel, so every laser ray diverges by its nature. So since this um, three factors made it really hard to find an analytical shape, uh, we started to get this shape by a generation. And I will show this to you by a little animation. So we shoot up with some first rate to a segment that is parallel to the ground. And then we take a next segment and orient it so that we get to a certain target point on the ground. And then we take the next target point and shorten the previous segment and take the next one and orient it so that it will hit the next target point. And here it is done with only five segments for the mirror. But if you take more than five, so we took about um, 1,500 segments, um, the result is quite fine. And yeah, this was the first generation, the first result. So it's not, um, it has a uh, changing point size still, but after some manual um, adoption uh, of the parameters, we got finally this result. So what we see here is that the point is um, for each distance away from the projector, 2.5 centimeters in, um, over all the space. So this was really great. So we went on to the next step to fabricate such mirror. So um, we chose a technique called thermoforming, like it's used for the surveillance mirror. So you take some board of plastic, and but you need a certain shape to 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 give the shape to the board. So we built it was a CNC mill from a big block of polyurethane and got this shape. Then we had um, an old thermoforming machine and inside there is this board of plastic. Above there is a heating and I'll show the video how this was uh, thermoformed actually. So you heat the material up so it welds a little bit and gets soft, then you remove the heating and then there's this shape below and you push it up and activate the vacuum. And after a second, um, this board was stiff again and we were able to cut it off. Uh, the simplest way to get it reflective is just to send it to a company that is specialized in surface coating. So we did it and they did a physical vapor deposition to bring aluminum particles to the surface. And here to see the first interactive prototype of base lace with a context mirror. So this was in low, low resolution. So now we try to find a way to get high resolution. And we did with such little pentile units that are actuated by two servos. <coughs> and each of those turned the, the mirror that was mounted on the bottom uh, in the center of the mirror. Uh, three of those units were controlled by one Arduino in our prototype, but uh, could be used more. And here you see the difference in projection. So on top you see the focus projection in high resolution, and on the bottom there's the low resolution projection over the context mirror, so the discurved mirror. Um, now we're going to have a look on the tracking we implemented. We used seven action depth cameras that were placed in the bottom of the base lace system all were pointing outwards of the system, had a little overlap to the neighbor camera. And all cameras were tilted up a little bit so that their uh, view cone frustum was parallel to the ground. And by that we had the tracking of the silhouette, the hand position and the feet. And here you see the debug view of seven depth cameras tracking several users around the system. So they were jumping in the game we will show you later. So how do we project the picture? Yeah, projection is done with components of the laser projector. Laser projectors are specialized to project vector graphics. And for this we took a five milliwatt green laser, um, uh, laser pointer. And the next part are galvanometers. These are fast moving mirrors and some controlling boards. <coughs> Two of those um, galvanometers are used to project to a certain point um, they were mounted in a perpendicular way. And the third galvanometer was used to turn the laser off. So we just turned it a little bit and so the ray ended in a light trap. <coughs> On software side, yeah, it's um, some um, 
drawing functions like circles and other polygons. And here you see we have certain modes. So the green ones are in context mode drawn and the red one in focus mode. Um, so we had to sort these objects and connect these objects because the laser ray needs to take so all the way over all the shapes. And for this we needed to add invisible lines. So in this picture the ray would um, go over the circle, then turn off, go to the quad, turn on again, draw the quad, turn off, go to the focus mirror. The focus mirror was oriented to the position of the star and then it will draw the star. Also we needed um, a breaking of lines because the mirror had a nonlinear behavior and straight lines wouldn't wouldn't be visible as straight lines on the ground if we wouldn't break down these lines. <coughs> to send it to the hardware, we used a sound card. So all the sequences of points were converted to analog signals and played back by the sound card on three channels. This is uh, the pipeline we used. So we had user tracking, the application response, response to this um, tracking. It went through the pipeline and then were played back by the sound card. So we have already seen that we can use these focus mirrors in order to create high resolution insets in our large context projection, like this, for example, for drawing icons and text and similar. But however, we can also use these focus mirrors to project on users or even to project outside of the context mirror area in order to create non-interactive graphics which are very far away from the, from the base lace system. In order to interact with base lace, we looked at the literature on interacting with floors and we found that the majority of the literature for floors actually proposes to interact with floors with feet, which works quite well. However, we think that it's quite also an interesting alternative to interact with floors using hands and the user's silhouette. Uh, we implemented a small game that's called jump ball and the objective was to jump next to a ball and propel the ball into the opponent's, uh, into the opponent, opponent's goal. And we also implemented um, um, a street paint application where users could jump in order to invoke a menu and then create, uh, select between different interaction techniques and then draw using their feet either on the ground or using their hands or using their, their silhouette. We conducted a very small user study in order to um, look at the user experiences with these different techniques. And uh, we compared foot position, hand position with an orthogonal mapping, hand position with a frontal mapping, and silhouette. And just subjectively, it looks like the hand position orthogonal leads to a little bit more accurate shapes. Um, and we also found that um, users found it much more intuitive and much, quick, much more quickly understood the interaction when we show their silhouette. Um, and they actually had problems to understand the interaction when we used the hand position because the hand position was usually at the, at the resting position next to the body and users had difficulty to understand that they could use the hand to interact with the system. After interacting for some time, however, the silhouette got a little bit annoying and then users preferred to actually use uh, only a cursor. In the future, we believe that it would be a lot of fun to add a lot more of these uh, focus mirrors to base lace you know, so we can create really a large number of these focus spots around the system and we can also remove these shadows of the, of the wooden frame by uh, using an acrylic cube. Um, we are quite excited about the idea um, that we can put the entire system on a robotic platform so we can have a self-driving system that can drive around in airports and shopping malls and create interactive floors everywhere. Um, for applications, there are some, for example, what you could do is in case of a traffic accident or similar situation, you could just place this unit uh, if it's battery powered on that location in order to create dynamic annotations. And then obviously you could also use multiple of these units to uh, create navigation systems and similar. And um, I, we, we really think that the uh, most interesting thing is that we have an integrated unit that can be just be placed anywhere and we can create interactive surfaces with 75 square meters, much larger than what we have on, on laptops or tabletops or, or mobile phones anywhere in our environment on the floors. So we, that's it from Baselace and we're open for your questions. Thank you. We have time for actually two or three questions, if you, if you mind. Um, oh. Hi, uh, Florian Heller, RWTH Aachen University. 
Uh, great work. I'm um, just wondering what made you build like the laser projecting system yourself instead of using show lasers, for example? <laughs> Um, yeah, we had just at first start we had just this idea. Let's do something with laser projectors. And um, laser projectors, when you want a good one, start with 8,000 euros or so. So we got parts for 100 euros on eBay and it was just a little project at a site as a yeah, student project. So, And then we had these parts and they work. And yeah. We could have uh, done it with colors and stuff with a show laser projector, that's right. But we had it and it worked and for the prototype it was okay. Cool, thank you. Thank you. So uh, I wanted to ask you, it's like uh, a context projector, three focus projectors, several depth uh, cameras. I guess just calibration is going to be a nightmare, but uh, I mean you deserve being asked what's been like the most challenging part of building such a system? Um, so most, most of the parts for us were quite straightforward, like the focus mirrors and uh, the cameras because we had several projects with the staff cameras, but actually generating this, the shape of the mirror to have this point size everywhere the same or mostly the same, um, we are now Math magicians to get it done uh, analytically, and so we generated and took us several time to get this shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was most challenging. Um, which is like the biggest? I mean, you were saying you, you're envisioning this maybe like a robot. You could even imagine it like some kind of uh, ah. like these parking stations that come in and out of the floor. But which is the biggest impact you see? Uh, of having these kind of systems now in our public spaces, which is the biggest, uh, deepest impact you can see in our, in our environment? Um, so we can't really, uh, it's an integrated unit. It's, it's basically projector-wide, so you can do anything. Uh, so I, I think that the biggest impact that is that you have these uh, uh, very relatively small units that can create this huge interactive space and that can be used for all kind of interactive things like, I don't know, so everything that we use public displays for, uh, we can do it now with huge displays in, 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 in public spaces, and we can do things that we simply cannot do on, on small displays um, because um, we ca just cannot show enough content. And it's definitely, it's a multi-user system, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Georg and Konstantin. Uh, I wanted to welcome now uh, to Patrick Bodies.